Welcome to PGCast, a production of HashRocket. My name is Jack Christensen. Our topic this episode is transaction isolation levels. The transaction isolation level determines what effect concurrent transactions can have on one another. Postgres implements three transaction isolation levels, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. We will use a simple ledger table with a running total as an example domain. The default isolation level, read committed, guarantees that uncommitted changes are not visible. So first let's begin a transaction. Next we'll insert a row. Typically the running total calculation would be handled in an after insert trigger. But to make the example easier to follow, we will do it inline. Returning star returns the inserted row so we can grab the ID for the update. Now before we commit, let's look at the entry table from another connection. Our changes aren't visible until we commit. Now what would happen if we did two of these concurrently? So we'll go back to our first connection, begin a transaction, and do the same stuff we did before, insert a row, compute the running total, but we won't commit until we do the same thing in the other connection. Now we'll commit them both. Even though the statements were run in a transaction, the running totals are incorrect. This is because neither transaction could see the other's newly inserted row. To solve this issue, we will use the strongest isolation level, serializable. This level guarantees that concurrent transactions could have been executed in serial. Let's reset the table and try again. First in our transaction on the left, we'll begin a transaction. Then to change isolation levels, we use the set transaction statement. Next we'll insert the row and compute the running total. Now we'll do the same thing in the other connection, only here we're gonna use a shortcut in that we'll set the isolation level as part of the begin statement. Now we'll insert a row, compute the running total, and finally we'll commit. The first committed transaction succeeds, but let's see what happens when we commit the other transaction. Postgres detects that there is no way these two transactions could have executed serially and rejects the commit. Applications that use the serializable isolation level must be ready to handle serialization errors on commit. Higher isolation levels can have a performance cost, but they can prevent data anomalies. More information, including about the repeatable read isolation level, a middle ground between the default and serializable isolation levels, can be found in the Postgres documentation. Thanks for listening.